Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, we're just waiting for a few extra people to arrive. Uh, my name's Newton. I'm the operations manager, which means I, I, don't, I operate. I'm an operator uh, here at Spirit Grow. Um, just here on behalf of Label, who unfortunately ha was called away at the last moment. Otherwise, as you all, most of you would know, I think we, many familiar faces here this evening, uh, would know that he would want to be here to introduce tonight's um, speaker. Um, and tonight's speaker is, as you will all know, uh, Dr. Beverly Lewis. I have to remind myself um, because I haven't I haven't met Beverly before this evening, but I've I've been astonished by Be Beverly's credentials. She's easily the most decorated individual we we've had speaking on this subject for some time, um, and I'm sure will give us a, 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 some some great information over the course of the next three weeks. Um, just as a point of housekeeping, if any of you haven't booked f for the following two weeks, it would be good, good of you to do so, just so that we know who's coming along. Um, so without further ado, I'll introduce Dr. Beverly Lewis. Thank you, Newton. Um, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be with you here tonight. There are many different ways to meditate and there are many different purposes for which meditation can be used. The intention of this three-part series is to explore ways of enhancing our ability to manage distractions and to discover in the process what lies beyond. My orientation to meditation in this series stems from my interest in developments in neuroscience and from my work with guiding people to be better able to manage stress, pain and sleep. And one of the hallmarks of a good beginning to being able to manage obstacles that may appear in our path at any time, is to be able to recognise what you can control and what you cannot. And so with that in mind, let us look to what we can control in our external environment and turn off any mobile phones or mobile computer devices of any nature that we don't necessarily want calling upon us for the next hour. And you may not know that the human attention span, the average human attention span, has been measured since the year 2000, when it was found to be 15 seconds in duration. The year 2000 is regarded as the beginning of the age of mobile computer devices. The average attention span was re-measured last year. It was found to be eight seconds. And to put this in perspective, a goldfish has a measured attention span of nine seconds. So this speaks very much to why we may be here tonight to be able to refocus our attention. And not only that, to put it where we want and where it's useful for us. Not only in meditation, but in our lives. Over the last 13 years, my colleagues, Dr. Daniel Lewis and Bill Patterson, have been running a meditation course. And we've found it very useful in that course to deconstruct meditation. In other words, to break it down into three parts. And we've found this has been useful not only for people who regard themselves as new to meditation, but also experienced meditators who are looking to deepen their practice. And so what we recognise as the three parts is basically a beginning, a middle 
and an end. The beginning is a warm-up phase and the end is a warm-down phase with the middle being the body of the experience. And you might think of a swimmer swimming a 50-metre race. You see the swimmer in the pool swimming, but you do not see them in the pool prior doing their warm-up, which may be a two-kilometre swim. You do not see them in the pool doing their warm down, which may be another two kilometre swim. And that athlete and their coach knows that to bring themselves to the best of their ability, they need to pay attention not only to the body of the activity, the swimming of the 50 metre race, but they also need to attend very carefully to the warm up and warm down to allow them to the next day be able to perform at the same level. And in fact, on the, say, on the day of the competition, to have everything come together. And so in our sessions together, and particularly tonight, we're going to use this as the warm-up or as a focus on the warm-up. We've got a three-part series. This is our warm-up. Then we've got a fuller immersion next week and we can regard the final week as the warm down and the way in which we want to look at integrating this meditation outside of this room into our lives. So in terms of how the series is going to pan out, we also want to be aware that tonight the focus in the warm-up phase is on overcoming distractions relating to the body. Next week, we're going to focus on, over dis on distractions relating to the mind. Now, you can't really separate them, but in some ways you can, as you're going to find out tonight. And in the third week, we're going to look at managing the distraction of life and how you bring this sort of space into your life, not, when you, not only when you come out to attend a session here on such an evening, but also how you may want to bring it into your life on a daily basis, possibly. Now, to begin with the body and comfort in mind, I'd like us to take a few moments to experience a mindful, mindfulness meditation that's going to have us come into our senses, literally. And so, I invite you, as you sit in your chair, to make yourself comfortable in whatever way you choose. And I invite you, as you're settling, to become aware of how your feet are placed, where your hands are resting. And you may choose to close your eyes when you're ready to enhance your inner focus. Excuse me? Hmm. Sure, good suggestion. <laughs> good suggestion. So we've just had the suggestion to turn down the lights. Very happy to do so. Thank you. Okay, so with the lights turned down, you may find that your own eyes feel more restful and you can choose whether to close them or not to bring in the external focus. And you can bring your attention now to any taste that you might have in your mouth. Any scent you might notice in the air. Notice how you are breathing. And then I'm going to invite you, strange as it may sound, to open your eyes and to gaze upon a colour. Notice that colour as if it's the first time you've seen it. 
Allow yourself to be absorbed in the intensity, the depth, the texture, the shadowing, whatever it is that you're aware of. Allow yourself to immerse yourself in that colour. Notice how you are breathing. And when you're ready, keeping your head looking in the direction that it is, expand your gaze to the two front corners of the room in a soft and gentle way so that you're simultaneously taking in the corners of the room. Softly and gently expanding your gaze. And then when you are ready, I invite you to become aware of being in this room with a full vision. And now we're going to gently turn the lights up a little more. Not necessarily too high, as everybody seems to be settling into this space, which tonight is a space that I want to allow you to appreciate in your own way, explore in your own way, discover in your own way. And actually, I'm interested to find out those of you who have come to this, dis this session entitled From Distraction to Discovery, if anybody came here because they have an obstacle or a distraction in their meditation space that they would like to overcome, so if there's anybody here who was particularly attracted by the topic, I'd be interested to find out. Chronic yeah. Pain. Okay, so chronic pain can certainly be a distraction at times. Any other particular areas? I'm also interested, as I haven't met many of you, to find out who would regard themselves as new to meditation in the group. Okay, that's quite a number of you. Who would regard themselves as experienced meditators? <laughs> Whatever you mean by experienced. <laughs> I accept your hand going up for whatever, however you classify experience. I'm wondering who's a regular med meditator? And who would like to be a regular meditator? Just to get some sense of purpose and intention as to wait to why you might have come. Thank you for that indication and certainly that seems to be the body and maybe um, it speaks well to this topic and how to go forwards. The definition of meditation that I'm using tonight is one that can be simply expressed. It is maintaining the present moment. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, what is that? Why is it important? And how do I do that? And in the process of tonight and as this series unfolds, we'll actually be delving into what is so special about maintaining the present moment. The important distinction that I want to make about the warm-up phase, which is what we're entering into, is that it's a phase that it's fairly non-intuitive. Non People tend to regard meditation as switching off. But essentially, it's switching in and switching over to another part of our nervous system. Just to explain that briefly, we have all the time two parts of what's called our autonomic nervous system in an interplay. When the sympathetic nervous system becomes heightened in its activity, and this part of the nervous system drives the stress response, we can notice the disturbance within us in many different ways. 
However, we have another part to the nervous system, which is called the parasympathetic nervous system. And this comes into play to balance out the stress response that we can often be aware that we are experiencing and we don't know how to switch over to another way of having our body respond. And some of you are looking a bit perplexed and there's a good reason why. Our understanding of this other part of our nervous system only really started to become clear in the 1970s when a Harvard University professor who was discovering the parasympathetic nervous system in meditators found that people had far more control over this part of their nervous system than he learned at medical school. And he was led then to investigate it and then he needed to prove it to his peers, other doctors, to show that we really do have this control and we don't really know what's possible. He's now in his 80s, he's got his own research institute and so the evolution of this understanding is still occurring. However, as we sit here, ready to go into the warm-up phase of a meditation, it can be very useful to know how you can access this other balancing part of your nervous system. And this professor termed this ability to access the other part of our nervous system, which is the antidote to the stress response. He termed it the relaxation response. And where it can be so useful is it takes away a lot of the distractions when you're learning meditation or even when you're an experienced meditator as to how to get into it, how to switch into another state of being where the balance is occurring. And so I'd like to invite you in a brief meditation, this won't take very long, to experience the relaxation response. And we could even turn down the lights a little. So as you're sitting in your chair in the way that you are at the present time, become aware of your feet and how they're positioned on the floor. The contact of your feet in your shoes with the floor. Noticing where the contact is. And is it different from one foot to the other? And you can close your eyes any time that you want to bring in a more internal focus. Or you can rest your gaze by just looking down. Become aware now of your hands and how they're resting. The temperature of your hands and whether one is different to the other. Then bring your attention to any sounds that you may be able to hear. Observe now any taste in your mouth and any scent in the air. And notice the movement of air into your nostrils. And as you do that, you may become aware that your breathing has become slower and deeper, naturally and effortlessly. There is nothing that you need to try to do. You are switching in so naturally to this physiological mechanism within us that is a wonder when we discover it and we, when we learn how to switch into it. And you may notice the expansion of your breath wherever you are 
aware of it in whatever way you are aware of it. You may notice it at the sides of your chest, at the back of your chest, at the front of your chest, and even deep down within your chest, and possibly even your abdomen. And being aware of the change in your breath is an indicator that you are switching in to activating your parasympathetic nervous system wherein resides the relaxation response, just waiting for you to tap into it at any time you choose. And you do not have to be sitting in a chair comfortably as you are now. You can tap in to the relaxation response, more or less anywhere, any time, any place. And there is no right or wrong way to do this. Only your way. And you may also notice before I invite you to return your attention to the room, the stillness within this space. And when you are ready to bring yourselves back, before you do, just notice which part or parts of your body you want to move first, second and third. And then when you're ready, start to move them. Whatever part or parts you do want to move. And bring yourself back into the room as the lights start to brighten up just a little. <coughs> I would be interested to find out a little about your experience during that brief exercise. A mindfulness meditation, one can also call it. And so maybe in a word or two, is there anybody who'd like to describe <coughs> their experience of sitting as I guided you through? Yes, thank you. Very relaxed. Okay, very relaxed. Yeah. Any other experiences? Nothing, just blank. I could hear the rain and <coughs> nothing else. Didn't think about anything. And is that usual for you, to have a blank palette, no. not to be thinking about anything? And I think I saw another hand. No? Anybody else with a word or two that might describe that experience? Calmness. Calmness. And switching off entirely from everything. OK. Now, I wasn't timing that exercise, but I would have thought it probably wasn't even five minutes. It was probably, well, we'll see later on the recording how long it actually was. The interesting thing about this tapping into the relaxation response is how little time you may need to actually feel that calmness. Um, when I'm working with people who have never experienced any form of relaxation previously, I'm often surprised at their ability just to switch over into this balancing state where you're not only balancing your nervous system but over time you're balancing your other body systems and the balancing or equanimity within your mind because there is no distinction between mind and body. So it can be very useful as a warm-up. It also gets you past the how should I be breathing, am I breathing that way, how do I get comfortable, did you notice how you just moved into comfort? How you moved into a natural deep breath and how there was a sense of settling? You may not have all have felt it to that degree. However, the stillness in the room represented that there was a lot of stillness within people. And for the people who didn't feel as still, this is an exercise that when you repeat it two or three times and you know what's coming, 
you may find that you can more readily just allow yourself to switch over into that balancing part of your nervous system. So we have another meditation that I'd like to do with you. But before I do that, I'm just wondering, are there any questions, especially in relation to what I have been? Sorry. Yes. I've got quite a bit of pain in my back. My back is certainly nervous. All right. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you'd like to do? So this lady's saying she's got quite, she got quite a bit of pain in her back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you became aware of, yes. of discomfort. Yes. Okay. So is there anything, do you need to move in your chair or anything to make yourself more comfortable? I, 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 when you stopped, I moved myself around and I felt a bit better. But I, Good. But the pain in my back was quite severe. It was okay, so somebody experienced some pain in their back, but when she moved around afterwards, it got somewhat better. And so understanding how to warm ourselves up is part of the process. And there might be some refinement in your case or the next time you may do it, you may not notice anything of that nature. In fact, I think it's important to mention every time you do a meditation, it's different to the time before. But the understandings and skills that you're developing allows you to manage a lot more than you may have thought that you could have. Any more questions? that people would like to ask at this point. Okay, so what we might do now is a meditation which is going to allow you to sit for a little longer. And so I invite you to make yourself as comfortable as you would like at this point in time However, I'll give you a little bit of an introduction because we are now in our warm-up phase, but we're actually moving on. So we have explored the senses, including opening your eyes to look at a colour to have yourself be really present. We have shifted into an exploration of the relaxation response. Where I'd like to take you now on our warm-up is to move into an understanding of a point of awareness. A point of awareness is what allows you to manage distractions in meditations. As you have already heard, if our average human attention span is eight seconds, it's not going to take long when we're sitting quietly in a chair, potentially, for us to drift somewhere. And a point of awareness is what you can focus on to bring yourself back to where you want to be in the space that you want to be, training yourself to focus your awareness and enhance your ability to bring this skill in, not only in meditation, but in your life. And so in this point, using this concept of point of awareness, which is very useful when it's in the body. So what I'm going to do in this meditation is I'm going to guide you in through your senses, into the relaxation response, and I'm get, going to get you to focus on a point of awareness. For experienced meditators, especially those with a regular meditation practice, you may well have your own point of awareness that you choose to go to, and you're welcome to do so. In this meditation, though, I'm going to suggest that you focus on the expansion of your breathing. It's there, in, out, there's plenty to notice in terms of where you're noticing the breath being when you bring your attention to it. And this is what you're going to bring yourself back to when you notice that you are 
getting distracted, as we all do, when we wander off and find we're not here at all, but we're somewhere else. I'm going to guide you to bring yourself back to that point of awareness. And I'm going to give you some time to sit without me talking to you, where you can just sit and discover for yourself this space that you can keep bringing yourself back to. And they talk about in meditation non-judgmental, being non-judgmental. However, I invite you to be gentle with yourself when you notice that you're wandering off. And guide your attention back. Gently guide it back to where you want it to be. And then, after you have sat for however many minutes seems to be right in terms of the time, I will then guide you through the warm down phase of meditation. So there's really nothing you need to do. But sit. Be guided in. <coughs> spend some time in the space that you'll find yourself in. Bring yourself back to the point of awareness when you find yourself drifting. And then I'll guide you out. So we can have the lights turned down. To a comfortable level. And comfortably now, find an easy way of sitting in your chair, making any adjustments that you want to allow yourself to experience the comfort of the chair as you sit in it, to experience the support of the seat underneath you, and the backrest against your back. sitting in to a comfortable position for you, as comfortable as you want to be as, at this point in time, and knowing that there is no right or wrong way to do this, only your way. And focusing now on your feet, on the floor, being supported by the floor to the extent that you're aware and noticing the toes, which toes you notice more, which toes you notice least. Observe now your hands and notice the sensations within your fingertips. Notice any sounds in or around the room, even within you, that you're aware of. Become aware of how you are breathing and how in the space of noticing the temperature of the air on your forehead and the space where your eyelids are touching you can notice how your breathing has become slower and deeper, naturally and effortlessly. Observe where any expansion is occurring, where it is that you're feeling movement. And know in the space of exploring the breath and where you're noticing the breath, 
you are shifting into the relaxation response. Gently, in your own way, in your own time. There's no need to hurry anything. There's no need to do anything. (coughs) In fact, this is something you don't even need to try to do. And in the space of the breath, you know that you are activating the relaxation response without having to know how it works even. And in that space, you can become aware now of your breathing as being a point of awareness a point that is anchoring you in the stillness. It is anchoring you and you can return to it whenever you find you're distracted. So you can be using your breath and the expansion that you notice with each breath as your point of awareness. You can use your toes. You can use your fingertips. Or you can use for people that have another point of awareness, whatever that is. And in the space of where you are is your point of awareness. Know that I'm going to give you some more space and I'm going to give a chronological space of five minutes. Five minutes in which you can comfortably sit and explore your point of awareness in the breath for most of you, the expansion of the lungs where you are noticing it. And in five minutes' time, my voice will return and you can remain as relaxed as you want at that point in time And I will guide you into the warm down phase. So the chronological five minutes begins now.
and five chronological minutes has now passed. And you may be able to observe the stillness in the room, in the space of the room. And as we're now entering the warm down phase of the meditation, you can just remain as relaxed as you choose. However, it may be a good time to become aware that you have brought yourself here this evening to experience something possibly to discover something possibly and that you have stepped through the portal of your senses. You have anchored yourself in a point of awareness, primarily your breath. And you have activated the relaxation response and then moved into stillness. However, the journey will continue beyond this room and in the next week and the days ahead, (coughs) you may want to Choose what you can take from this experience to explore further in your own way. What is useful to you? And what is useful to you may become clarified and grow over the next few days. And so when you are ready, become aware that the warm down phase is winding down and that you can become aware of what part or parts of your body you might like to move. And then when you're ready, you can begin moving yourself in whatever way you want. Bringing yourself back to the space of the room. In your own time, in your own way. And once again, we will gradually turn up the lights. My sense is that I would really like to allow you to take yourselves home soon in a relaxing, peaceful way. I'm aware that some of you may have questions, but I would encourage you to write your questions down so that I can look at incorporating them in the next couple of sessions and sharing them with the group. I also invite you, those of you who are coming next week, If you so wish, when you arrive, you can also write down any questions that have evolved over the next few days as you undertake your own exploring and discoveries. And to give you a preview of next week, it's really going to focus on the immersion stage or phase, the middle body of meditation. What happens when you're sitting quietly and comfortably in meditation and the thinking patterns 
start up a disturbance. What do you do then? That will be our focus in particular next week. What do you do about the thinking patterns that are not you, that arise very commonly in peaceful spaces or peaceful spaces that we are wanting to create for ourselves? So that's where the journey will continue next week. But I would like to conclude by sending you in a peaceful way, home, now fully aware of the journey that you've come on tonight in terms of your experience and taking home with you what is useful for you to clarify, explore further, maybe ask more questions about next week when you come in. The exploration and the journey is yours. I'm but your guide for this series. So the journey for this evening is complete. We've run early thanks to your attentiveness and your ability to just absorb yourself in the process. This is what they used to call an early mark. I'd like to thank, thank Dr Beverly Lewis for coming along tonight and uh, I'm sure everyone's a lot more relaxed now than when they came in. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.